We turn our attention back to tropical storm Idalia. Unlike the devastation in Maui, the toxic disaster that was East Palestine in Ohio, where Joe Biden was completely MIA, well, President Biden today amazingly got to a podium, relatively quickly even, to address the ongoing storm. Unfortunately, he shifted the conversation, as per usual, to himself. Again, comparing and commiserating over his own tragic kitchen fire. The kitchen fire lasted a whopping 20 minutes before the fire department extinguished what they referred to as a minor incident. He nearly lost his precious 67 Corvette, his cat, and his wife. Now, for over a year, Biden has pretty heartlessly compared almost every major disaster to what is an insignificant kitchen fire that almost destroyed his precious little cat and Corvette. Take a look. I didn't know anything like that, but I lightly struck my house. We had to be out of that house for about seven months while it was repaired because so much damage was done to the house and half the house almost collapsed. I don't want to compare difficulties, but we have a little sense, Jill and I, what it's like to lose a home. Years ago, now 15 years ago, I was in Washington doing Meet the Press. It was a sunny Sunday. And lightning struck at home on a little lake that's outside of our home, not a lake, a big pond, and hit the wire and came up underneath our home into the heating ducts, the air conditioning duct. To make a long story short, I almost lost my wife, my 67 Corvette, <laughs> and my cat. So I know from experience how much how much anxiety and fear and concern there are in the people. We didn't lose our whole home, but lightning struck, and we lost an awful lot of it about 15 years ago. What empathy. Joe, Maui was oh, so many homes were wiped out. Many people will never go back to their home, ever. They may not afford to be able to rebuild, Joe. And th some people now in Florida, their lives are going to be upended for at least another year, at least, if they can afford to rebuild. It's not always about you, Joe. No one really cares about your idiotic small kitchen fire in Delaware that nearly, where you nearly lost your precious Corvette a decade ago. Nobody really cares about that tonight. On the bright side, at least Joe's finally talking about a hurricane in real time. I guess that's progress, but maybe it's just uh, convenient timing since the storm made landfall on one of the few days Biden is not on vacation this month. Take a look. Did you guys realize that the initial Hawaii wildfire response was not that good? Or is it just easier for people to get help from the White House when the president is not on vacation? So the premise of your question and the way you posed your question, I disagree, just for the record. Uh, so if you talk to, if you were to do your reporting and speak to the governor of Hawaii, the senators uh, of Hawaii, the folks on the ground, they would say that the president reacted in record time when it came to dealing with the wildfires, uh, when it came to dealing and making sure that they got everything that they need on the federal level to deal with what was going on on the ground. Let's not forget there were more than 600 uh, uh, federal employees on the ground already to assist uh, with the wildfires in Maui. So your question is, is wrong, it's flawed in many, many ways. And I would, I, would, uh, I would advise you to go speak to the governor and the local and state officials in, in, uh, in Hawaii. Record time, just a flat out lie. Biden took two separate vacations before finally making his way to Maui. According to Joe, it was important that he remain on vacation because he would just get in the way in Hawaii. The only problem with that phony excuse was there was nothing in the way, left in the way to get in front of for almost two weeks before he showed up. And when asked about the devastation, the loss of life, no comment. He said that not once, but he said it twice. And by the way, someone should really put Corinne Jean-Pierre uh, in, in her binder, because uh, we're almost now an entire month after the Maui wildfires, that devastation, not exactly a kitchen fire, and we still have no idea how many people lost their lives. How is that possible? And as of now, at least 115 people are confirmed dead, but anywhere between 350 and 1,000 people are still missing. How do we, a month later, not know the exact numbers here? How come the emergency alert system 
wasn't activated on the island? How come an environmental nutcase, according to reports, withheld vital and necessary water that firefighters bravely and desperately needed for nearly six hours? How did that happen? This is a gruesome, gruesome indication that the federal response, Joe Biden's response, has been totally inept. And it's not the first time, because we saw a similar level of incompetence in East Palestine, in Ohio. Remember Joe promised he would visit the Rust Belt community? It's over six months. No sign of Joe Biden. Plenty of vacation time. No sign of Joe. How are you feeling about Joe in Ohio tonight? Now, despite the fairy tales about his administration, you know, they're all for the working class, working class communities in the Midwest. Yeah, middle class Joe, Scranton Joe, would rather spend his time in a luxurious mansion on Lake Tahoe uh, or sitting on his tired old ass on a beach in Delaware, a, a chair that's too busy, too heavy for him to even move in his pathetic condition. And speaking of vacation, Guess who's planning another trip to the beach, despite the hurricane on the East Coast in Florida and the hundreds of missing people in Maui and other important duties that a normal U.S. president would be taking care of. You know, like, let's see, uh, the energy prices that are going sky high, inflation still out of control, borders where we now have confirmed uh, that, in fact, people on the terror watch list are crossing into our country. Don't worry, your president's headed right back to Delaware for another long weekend of rest and relaxation, and no plans to call off his fun in the sun. Take a look. Are you making any contingency plans on your own schedule, um, either with this Labor Day with your own personal travels and also for your international travels that are coming up next week, that are you going to need to reshuffle things? Well, I may. I just don't know yet. Now, Joe, while Joe's at the beach under his little umbrella, that chair, by the way, he has a hard time moving it. Probably somebody should help him. Well, Florida Governor DeSantis, he's been hard at work. That's what leaders do in times of crisis. They show up, they get to work, natural disasters. Don't take a break during your holiday weekend. And today on Twitter, the First Lady of Florida, Casey DeSantis, she posted this picture on Twitter. It's a fallen 100-year-old oak tree at the governor's mansion where the First Lady of Florida and her children were at the time. Luckily, thank God, nobody was injured from this fallen tree. But the death toll in Florida, Georgia, the Carolinas, sadly, it's expected to rise. I hope it doesn't. Our prayers are with everyone in the Southeast tonight. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.